butterflies. One is going to be very new school and the other is going to be very old school. Um, so the first pattern that we're going to be tying tonight is a Ray Bergman pattern which is actually incredibly old. Um, I mean, we're talking bamboo rods from Abercrombie and Fitch, not, uh, you know, jeans that are skinny and stuff like that. Aaron, how's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Um, James, good evening. Absolutely no problem, man. I'm excited to tie this Ray Bergman pattern. Terry, hello. Um, so yeah, this is a really old classic lead wing, wet fly, whatever you want to call it. It's just an old school quality pattern. And the thing I kind of like about this is, you know, people say things come full circle. And to me, James, being uh, turned on to this, 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 uh, all these patterns and this database, it just screams for probably one of my favorite pastimes, which is, well, current pastimes, which is going to be, you know, ultralight two-handed rods. So a lot of these patterns are really going to lend themselves to that. Michael, hello. Logan, hello. Sergey, hello. Hello to everybody. Guy, hello. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, as usual, we'll go down onto the vise, tie some bugs, talk about them, and uh, hopefully I don't mess them up. And I made nice curtain. It's, this is muslin or something. This is this is good stuff right here. Come on now, Michael. So if I don't undo that one, let's see here, we'll get the vise kind of in cue, zoom in, cool, try to zoom out, oh, not in, out, let's see if I can't get that, cool, alrighty, so this one I may or may not have fished, but here's what we're going for, these little classic Ray Bergman style flies and uh, this one is his March Brown I figured it was fitting as March was the closest month to us thanks Terry Howard welcome hello um, so it's a uh, it's a little married wing uh, kind of wet fly uses pretty basic materials now as far as my recipe for the hook um, what I have in the vise here is a I don't know I got a mystery box of cool limerick bended various upturned downturned eye steelhead hooks at a garage sale paid a whopping 50 cents for this um, they're really old so how long until the caddis I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, somewhere in that zone, Logan? I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, so this is a downturned eye. I'm sure there's modern variants very similar to this. Uh, actually, Alec Jackson makes a really cool uh, covert style nymph hook, which would work out really well in this case. Yeah, exactly. It's a, It was a great score. So I'm going to use just a brown thread. I'm probably using something lighter than I should because I really don't have any heavy threads. But uh, so this is a uh, Vivas 10 odd. If you have eight or six, it's not going to make a difference. Um, I tie with smaller thread because I don't like building a large head on the fly. So personal preference there, kind of my style. Jeffrey, hello, welcome to the live stream. I'm going to see if I can't get that just centered just a hair more. I don't even know what I just did. There we go. Cool. So we're going to start out with uh, our tail. And right here we have a... Uh, <laughs> I'm on the clock. <laughs> yeah, I. the only thing it doesn't work well with, uh, James, is uh, really strong GSPs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of our tail uh, feathers out of the partridge here. If you have a full skin, if you don't, if you have a bag of partridge, that would work out fine too. Um, 
and we just want to get this really cool segmented section in here and get a little bit of the, the tip in there I always suggest that people purchase the whole skin they're like well it's like thirty dollars you'll you'll get your money's worth on your flies that you're tying hey Steve hey Max how's it going <laughs> Sergey, so, it's, it's, trust me, it, uh, I bought my kids earmuffs for a, a good month or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to secure these in about a hook gap's width, width back. It's just my own personal impression of it. And, you know, like I said, this is my spin on the March Brown pattern. So we get those guys all down in there. Strong fingers, yeah. <laughs> Aaron says he has no problem snapping the 200 GSP. I don't even I don't even know how you do that. I break hooks with the GSP, so I'm impressed, Aaron. I am impressed. Um, so next up, we're gonna work back towards the back of the hook, and we're just gonna put a little tiny dubbing ball. We're going to be ribbing this with, uh, since it's old school, I went with a old school gold tinsel, which is what the pattern calls for. So I'll talk a bit about the dubbing that I'm using. Uh, as you guys know from most of my stuff, I'm really into synthetics, so I have this part of my box here that just says hair. Uh, I obviously have a lot more hair dubbing than that, but this is, uh, this is a uh, brown and a little bit of, uh, I think it's called an antique gold. Um, rabbit and I mixed in a some coyote skin Danny hello Aaron says he's a huge liar <laughs> Rick you have finally figured this out welcome um, so this is actually a coyote mask and you can see I've been starting to trim some of these guard hairs off of here and it makes a really cool spiky dubbing so, if you guys see some coyote masks showing up in the fly shop, you'll know one of the uses for them. So hopefully you guys have had a mellow week. I've been racing around trying to get stuff done for next year. As usual, once I get the green light, I'll start showing you guys next year on Loon Live. So, so I'm going to take about maybe maybe five inches of this gold tinsel. We don't need it to be too heavy. And a lot of times what I'll do is if you can see since this is a return to eye hook what I do to keep my bodies in line and clean is I'll start my tinsel right at where the eye returns and wrap it down that side so that everything's nice and equal. It's more of a uh, you know s salmon fly type trick you just put everything down that side that you can Mr. Evers good evening coyote is the bomb I've been thoroughly playing with the coyote uh, in all of my trouty applications so since we're dealing with uh, some some hair and I'm not doing dubbing loop I'm going to apply some swax Absolutely. Saw one on the side of the road. <laughs> well, you could go and shave that roadside coyote. I've seen steelhead anglers do and tires do weirder things than that, I can guarantee. It absolutely does work great on Hare's ears. Um, any fly shop should be able to get them. I got mine through, uh, Hairline, and they're distributing them, Danny. So, I don't know, if you're here in the States, anybody who deals with Hairline should be able to obtain a mask. You can always call them and, you know, say, hey, who's in my area that I could get this through? 
So we're just going to simply rib through with this French tinsel. And this is a really, really kind of simplistic pattern. There's not a ton to deal with on this, which is great. We're all kind of weird anyways. Uh, that is true. So, I had a friend Cerakote my scissors for me. He was doing some stuff, so I stripped him down and had him Cerakote them. If you guys are like, where are you getting these weird scissors from? So we start, and I just built the little head bump there. <laughs> hey, we have coyotes here too. My Some of my better redneck buddies hunt hunt them all the time with their rifles. <laughs> I don't know what they do with them afterwards. I've never asked that. Got a few tails though. That is true. That's a great point. Side of the road is my fly shop. It's a it's a great point. Very good point there, Terry. Yeah. Furriers definitely could be liquidating some stuff here. It's our benefit. It's actually kind of funny, like, probably when these patterns were being developed, like the forefathers of fly tying, stuff like that, were, you know, some people who have, you know, have a much greater knowledge of the industry than I told me that the reason that most of us can deal with, you know, having waterfowl and migratory species is because of, uh, you know, guys like Eddie Bauer and some of the other people out there um, that were into fly fishing when they were also doing clothing. It was really amazing to me. It's awesome what you learn when you go out to lunch with people that have been in this industry a long time. That feels pretty stiff for a wing. We'll see how it pans out here. So right now I'm just getting ready with the wing. We're just using some uh, turkey. <laughs> yeah, eBay probably has some turkey or uh, some coyote. You can get anything on eBay these days, it would seem. Okay, so there's one. Every time I use eBay, I can never get anybody to pay, which I don't understand. I think, I'm, I think I find the ones that don't understand that you have to pay for the items. You don't just get to bid on them. Man, those are roached trying to get a little bit more of a meaty section here that'll have to hunt awesome Danny there you go I uh, don't have the uh, the skew for you it's the only thing I do not have some of them I have memorized but not that one there we go so what you want to do is just try to line these wings up, make sure they're even. You can just pick and pluck apart as needed. They kind of, their turkey's really sticky. It's harder to adjust. So what we want to do is you just want to hold them, and you can see them mildly tent just a little bit. Yep, yeah, caddisfly definitely will have them. They probably have everything. Those guys. So I'm going to trim some of these guard hairs off the top just so I can get that wing to sit right where I want it. I don't mind it underneath, but. <clears throat> okay. So we'll do two wraps. And you can see I'm pinching that thread in my fingers each time. And then I just kind of let it fall. And that's going to create these ring wings really aren't tented too much they're not as married as you know some of the steelhead stuff that I did but same kind of philosophy so 
So we get all of that business out of the way. And these these kind of tend to just have a, a bigger, more bulky, you know, head on them anyway. So that's all right. They get real glossy and do all sorts of cool varnish back in the day stuff. So when you tie tons of big soft hackles, the first thing that always seems to go on your pelt is all of your big partridge feathers. That's all right. Get a good one in here. <laughs> right, right on, Danny. Yeah, Terry, do you know how old he was? Like, when... I know he was, like, really prominent in, like, mid-19th century fly tying. Um, I found a couple things online about about him. Um, one wanted money to look at the flies that he tied. The other one was not asking for money, so I kind of went there, but it didn't have as much of a synopsis as I would have liked. Uh, and this last week for me has been absolutely brutal. Uh, <laughs> but that's all right. So we're going to take the partridge and we're going to fold it in half. Coyote and Roadrunner steelhead fly. <laughs> or a chubby Chernobyl. So we'll get a few wraps out of this. You don't want to overdress these patterns, um, especially any soft hackle. I, you know, we try not to overdress them. You want to get a lot of that movement um, out of those fibers. Kind of like tying intruders, the same philosophy. And here's the best part. You can just wrap away on the front of these, and it's going to look period correct. Because, let's face it, these guys, a lot of these guys were tying in hand. Um, many of the old production tires were women, if you guys didn't know that, and a lot of different threads, you know, they didn't have 10 aught that tied uber small stuff, and kind of, kind of goes with the sign of the times, so, instead of lacquer, Let's see. Yeah, I looked at the museum or history of his flies, and somewhere in there they wanted, they were charging money, and I was like, just to look at the flies? I'll have to go back and look again, because it really intrigues me. I went through pages and pages of Google images, and being a weird steelhead tire, I've, you know, bought, I have Blue Jay. I wanted to tie a Blue Jay, but I figured not everybody would have Blue Jay wing pieces. Absolutely, it's a great replacement, um, especially some of the higher up rump feathers on a pheasant. They work really well for soft tackles. Great point. Um, goodness, the hackle plier is uh, tire tools with a Z, and you can see it's just a spring-operated thing. I lose it on my bench, so I attach some old fly line, but it's just a piece of spring steel, and it's the best hackle plier ever. Um, when I was given that, I was, I promptly ordered, uh, like five more. <laughs> um, no, it's not a rising model. Um, it's called a tying tools from, I got mine through hairline. So I think they're like eight bucks or something along those lines. So that is kind of the completed, let me see if I can, that looks better there, the, the wing kind of matches. How do you reflex the UV rays? <laughs> so, I don't know, I don't know, Coyote's kind of tricky. So yeah, it's just a real classic wet fly. I really think if you tied this in some other colors too, um, getting more into like your, uh, like some, some oranges. That looks really orange on camera. Um, and some of these greens, green olive, like those two colors right there, which do not look 
representational on camera at all for me on the tiny screen. Um, but it could look really great as like a drowned caddis pattern as well if you're swinging it through runs. Um, so I'm really, Terry, I'm really, uh, really stoked that you turned me on to this and it's just another rabbit hole for me to go down and tie flies from. Um, thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, the vice. Oh, my vice is a, uh, it's a regal revolution and it's the, it's a colored model. Um, they come in, I think, blue, black, green, purple, maybe a pink. I don't know. Um, they have a bunch of different colors now. So, so now, <laughs> thanks, Michael. Yeah, Blue Jay is a beautiful feather. It's absolutely amazing, and I use it for cheeks on real goofy Atlantic salmon stuff that I go and s swing, uh, you know, old patterns and stuff like that. But back in the day, they didn't have, you know, you couldn't walk down the store and grab a bag of really killer steely blue ice dub. You had to go snub a blue jay and score your awesome feathers that way. So it's a little different. Um, so next up, this is the, uh, I call it the, I'll get them a little bit more righted there. But this is the El Vato Caddis, and as you can see, there's not a ton to it. Um, I kind of, the name for this fly, I don't name a ton of stuff. Usually, I let friends name my flies. Uh, but I just was fishing this for a little over a year now, and growing up in San Diego, there was always the Vatos, with the Dickies below the knees, you know, the so the old socks with the stripes, slip-on vans, and a wife beater. And they loved low riders. So this is a low rider caddis pattern, lovingly named after the Vatos that I knew in my childhood. Uh, and yeah, so where I'm using this is highly selective trout. Um, out here on the lower sack, I fish a lot of uh, the gravel bars. And when they get greasy, yeah, the, the Blue Jay is uh, pretty awesome. I, I, I have to agree. So when I'm out fishing on these like long gravel bars, they get really greasy and, and it slows down um, towards like the end of the gravel bar, obviously. There's the head of the run, kind of the bucket, and then it starts to tail out and turn into just these big flats here. Um, and the flats can be great places to pick up fish. So in the evenings here from late spring all the way into the fall, we have amazing caddis hatches. It used to be um, a little bit better, but you can still find these fish just eating caddises like Skittles. Um, the one thing I found is the ones that were riding high weren't getting eaten as much, so I created this pattern. Um, and I'll, we'll walk you through it here in a second. So the hook is a Daiichi 1130. It's a size 12. And it's a 1x short, so it's a short shank hook, so it's a short 12. Um, but it's got a wide gap, so as you guys know, everything that I tie is typically wide gapped for increasing hookups. It's kind of like Match.com for the fly fishing world, you know? Um, and, you know, throughout the year, there's different caddis hatches. So this one happens to be like the Mother's Day or the... Uh, kind of that olive -y caddis, and I'm just going to be using an olive micro pearl core braid. I use a lot of orange. I use, I don't have black, but, uh, and I'll also use a root beer. Kind of root beer and orange really are good for me. Um, tonight we're just going to tie green, true to the color in the picture. So I trim off it's a little, it's like two bodies. So I'll trim off about an inch of this pearl core braid. And as you can see, there's not a lot to it. And I just use a lighter at the end to cinch it down and turn it into a nice taper. So you can use any thread for this pattern. I'm just going to use my, uh, my 50D because 
Yeah, I, I agree. Root beer stuff just does work. I think it's probably one of the most naturally occurring colors possibly in the insect world, so it uh, definitely is a hot one. So I actually wrap the shank back pretty deep as you can see um, and then I leave about oh three sixteenths of an inch forward. There you go. Yeah, I have a slab of marble for my base too. Actually, yeah, it's granite or marble. I don't know. Looks like it has some sort of like weird creatures in there. All you guys went to the Streamer Love Fest. I like it. We need something like that out here on the West Coast. Um, so yeah, I wrap it down. We're not really adhering any materials to it. I'm just using it as a mild binding agent. So I'm going to measure out the tail segment to where I want it. And I'm going to take a, a light turn and then really ensure that I secure this in here. And I go, I move a little bit backwards on this because since the body is going to be really short. Did you guys happen, uh, was, who else was there? I know some of our, uh, some of our, our loon boys were there. Um. Brian Wise from Fly Fishing the Ozarks, I think he was there. They'd been doing a bunch of video work. But uh, Streamer Fest looked really fun from all the pictures that I saw. Uh, so once we have this in, we're just going to kind of place it down where we want it. And I'm going to use the fluorescing flow. Um, sorry about the reflection, but I have no lights on except for two uh, really dark ones. I think it's cool that you guys were both at the same event and now at this event. That's pretty pretty awesome. So all I do is I, I coat the body and just so I don't glue my fingers to things. I'm going to push it down and then just kind of marinate it to the hook. And the more on center it is, the better for us and what we're doing. So, bingo, and we cure. So you can see that thing pop. That's the fluorescing section of that resin. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Brian's a good guy. He makes some of the craziest videos I've ever seen, but we like it. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is a, a peacock black ice dub. <laughs> and I'm just going to take the smallest amount possible. And this is just a base for my thread to sit on. Yeah, Brian Brian is on our team. He's he is super cool. I really enjoy his video antics. So next up we have to put in our wing case. So this is kind of really not that much different than tying a uh you know, uh a, a nymph pattern like a copper john or something. Aaron, I stub peacock black, you love it. Don't worry about it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thin strip and I'm going to cut it at a slight angle so you guys can see. No, it's actually, it's not a cased caddis pattern. It's actually, a, it's a caddis dry pattern. So you guys can see I have a little slight taper in the foam. And that's just going to get lashed in here. And everything is going to really get tied over. I just put the uh, ice dub in there because it secures the base just a little bit better um, and doesn't allow it to rotate. So the next little treatment we're going to add is just a cold uh... <laughs> Thanks Matt, keep them in line for me will you? 
Uh, next we're just going to add this cold canard in black. So now when I switch over to um, say my oranges, I go into some of the rust and, and, and brown colors. Um, just because I think that it matches the naturals a little bit more closely. And these guys are going to get a pretty good hack job at the end here. So we'll just do, uh, as the legend Davy McPhail would say, touching turns. And uh, work right up within about an eighth of an inch of the front of our hook. We'll go ahead and trim that out. Throw in a few ramps there to secure everything. <laughs> Aaron's getting hammered on. Hey, I, you know, I think Aaron can take it. Um, so with these really kind of scud-esque type hooks, as you guys can see, it's, it's a really light wire styled scud hook um, that you can use for dries. I'm going to pull a dubbing loop, but what I want to do is secure this sideways so the natural, uh, yeah, it floats uh, super similar to an emerger, Logan. Um, so what I want to do is I'm just going to do this so it doesn't slip off the front of the vise. And we can just advance the thread up to the front because that'll be the next place that we're at. <laughs> Um, we'll just get a dubbing spinner and set that in there. So the secret here is our Peacock Black Ice Dub. And I like to use this guy, which is a Primo Deer Hair Strip in a dark brown. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brian Wise, I believe, yeah, you're right, he is sponsored by the Cortland. We just use him for all of his crazy fly tying videos, because he does them all to really cool rave music. So what I'll do is I'll just do a little hand stack, um, and you don't want these tips to be, so you can see I have about half an inch, I don't care if they're even or not. All the stuff that you actually want on the deer hair goes away. And we're just going to mate it. I'll mate it down here to this ice dub. And you don't need very much at all. So it's almost a, I guess it's technically, it's just a dubbing loop. Um, but it, So we're kind of almost pulling a Jerry French maneuver here. Um, and you just want to spin that. And when it's done spinning, you'll see it's, put my hand behind it, it's really spiky. So, turn that back over so you guys don't, I don't lose my thread. And look like a rookie who forgot all this stuff and everything. Because that's never happened before. So what we'll do is we'll just start by palmering this in. And you're only going to get a few wraps out of this, which is okay. It's pretty much all you'll need. You kind of will end up losing most of the eye of the hook in there, but it'll pop back through. We can trim off what little is left from this. Didn't have, so I'm just going to throw a half hitch in here just to hold it on the eye of the hook while I come back in and work. <laughs> so 
So what we'll do, I like I like to trim a little bit. I call this cul de sac -ing. We'll just trim in a little cul de sac here. Get everything pushed back just a hair. Then all we're going to do is just pull our foam forward. Catch it right behind the eye of the hook. Ooh, I bonked that. Got all sidetracked on Streamer Fest and forgot to throw in the wings. That was not smart, but that's all right. The wings are kind of in there. Um, then I just kind of flop up the head just a little bit, and you guys can trim out some of this. So I'll shorten up a lot of these fibers. So when the fly sits, it's very flat in the water, like that. Um, I've never learned to use a whip finish tool, so I just don't don't use one, Logan. Uh, <laughs> well, I time with or without it depends on if I'm guiding or not. <laughs> Medallion wing sheeting is a little tricky, but. It's also a little bit overkill, I think. I suffer from ADD pretty badly, that, so, you know, I see squirrel and I'm on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've tied the Skycomish Sunrise before. It's, it's a great pattern, but so yeah, that's just the little Elevato caddis. He's a little low rider. Um, another cool thing is too, if you, I'll I'll leave the tail a little bit short, and uh, with the with the head that's on here, the way it sits, you can actually skate this too. So if you have uh, like some of those motorboat caddises, like up in Kamloops and other places where they like to skitter across the surface. Um, it's a great pattern for that kind of stuff too. I enjoy doing that a lot. And just keep trimming them up just a little bit at a time. Um, you can dead drift it or you can skate it, which would kind of be like, you know, twitching it. But uh, traditionally, I'm throwing this uh, upstream uh, in a big kind of uh, like a it's probably it's like more like an ambush point so it's on a, the soft inside edges because typically I'm in my boat I'm not walking waiting this um, when I'm fishing this so when an island comes off there's like that little soft eddy here main currents sitting out It'd probably be way smarter if I did that um, and uh, there we go something like that so yeah like at the back of an island let's say here's the back of the island there's the main current pushing off this way. I'm fishing them right in there, just dead drift upstream. So I just anchor up pretty far down in the back eddies, and uh, that's that's how I'm fishing them. So I'm dead drifting them quite a bit. Um, you can tie a bigger version too with a regular pearl core braid, which I'm using for uh, like an October caddis pattern. And uh, so it just goes. But October caddises just sputter all over the place, so I'll twitch them and make sure that they're not dead drifted properly. <laughs> oh, Aaron, I'm surprised you haven't heard my kids. They're downstairs with their uncle just raising havoc, I think. So, sow bug roundup. Awesome. Danny's tying there. What do I use for wings? Um, a lot of times I use medallion wing sheeting. You can use um, uh, Swiss straw. You could use any number of materials for wings. So um, it just really varies on what you have available. I like the medallion wing sheeting. It tends to uh, stays pretty solid. 
and looks incredibly realistic like you can see Let's see if I can get it to focus that closely there's just little tiny wing buds on there but uh, web wing yeah web wing would work <laughs> so yeah there's a, a ton of variations that you guys can do on there and make it different and better and more fun um, and with the lighter patterns too I go into some more of the lighter ice dubs and stuff like that so but so I think uh, I think Aaron is actually going to get his his wish on the next loon live I'll leave it open for a minute here um, for pattern requests for next week for one pattern request next week obviously we can always get to more at later shows but uh, we're going to be doing a, a broke neck variation Aaron for you Mr. Matt Ebers was kind enough to allow it. You're getting a broke neck next week. Hot pink and blue. <laughs> so. Let's see if anybody else has... Thanks, Steve. All right. Thanks, Michael. Um, let's see. Glass tail caddis pupa. I'll check it out. I gotta write that down because otherwise, squirrels. Uh, definitely. Uh, Mike Mercer. Yeah, he is. A, he's a good friend of mine. He's a very creative human. He's awesome. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Guy, thank you. Well, maybe he would divulge all of his secrets, but maybe I'm protecting him. <laughs> Tie anything with feathers. Jeffrey, thanks, man. Um, Terry, thank you. Appreciate you guys all tuning in. Um, so, yeah, we'll do a, a glass tail caddis pupa. I think that's actually a really secret pattern that I love. <laughs> yeah, Aaron. Well... I might have the recipe on my phone, but I'm keeping the secrets, like I said, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so, anyways, guys, we'll, uh, catch you guys in two weeks, uh, thank you again for tuning in, have a great night, better weekend, and, uh, we'll talk to you then, take care, alright, Logan, we're on the glass tail, don't worry, alright, thanks, guys, Sergey, thank you, Thanks, Matt.